Hi, I'm Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV7. We're outside, it's 80 degrees if we're not blown away. You're watching a show called Conversations with Fred. Today we're going to talk with a gentleman who's written four books, volunteers in about any agency you can name, just an interesting character. His name is Larry Samuels. So we're going to go inside and meet Larry. Good morning, everyone. I want to, my name is Larry, Larry Samuels, and uh, um, I, uh, I'm not very good at speaking extemporaneously or even off the cuff, so that's why I use notes. So I wanted to thank um, our host today, Mr. Fred McNeil, for inviting me uh, to this interview, and uh, it's, uh, uh, I'm excited about it. So what I'd like to talk about today is uh, some personal history, uh, my service as an enlisted sailor in the United States Navy during Vietnam, and uh, my community activities. Uh, so that's what I'm going to talk about here. So uh, my wife, Peg, uh, uh, for the past 35 years um, that we've been married and our two grown children, uh, we've been in Chestertown for 14 years. Living on the Queen Anne side of the river, uh, right? Yes, okay. uh, we recently moved. We're on the Queen Anne side, still Chestertown, but uh, we can still get to the Acme <laughs> okay. and, uh, and Redner's. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we moved here from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, my wife is from a small town up in... Um, in New Jersey, uh, but I'm from here. She uh, 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 came here to work. Uh, she taught. Uh, she, she was a English. She was an English professor at uh, Delaware State University, historical black college, and a middle school teacher in Dover. And she's also an ordained Reverend Deacon, serving at St. Paul's Episcopal Church. So a busy Church household. You're writing Central, books, yeah. and she's a clergy. I'm married person. to clergy. And uh, it's it's a pretty funny stuff. And we're going to have a whole other show in the future, ah. just because you and I have talked mm -hmm. over the last couple of weeks about growing up in New York oh, and yes. Brooklyn. I mean, there's stories that both of us either laughing, that's crying, that's a whole or good. other story. But that's another time. Another well, place. some of that is really available in uh, um, uh, in my books. Uh, my books are collections of, and I'll talk about that, but the collections of uh, short stories, essays, uh, reflecting on human relationships, and uh, love, heartache, and adventure. Kind of life, they're life in general, Against right? history, so they're fascinating books. For, I'm the humblest guy in the room, if I don't say so myself. So uh, they're very enjoyable, Good. Uh, like that. So uh, I, uh, so she's the deacon over there. And uh, I am a U.S. Navy uh, Vietnam veteran, uh, honorably discharged in 1975. Um, I, uh, I, uh, what is this? That's oh. okay. As we get no, older, I we served, keep bringing oh, closer. <laughs> I served, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, okay. I served as an E-5 uh, second-class petty officer, uh, boiler tender, equivalent to, equivalent to sergeant in the Army. And uh, Tell me what, what I mean, a reference, what, when you hear what a boiler tender sure. is, all of a sudden you respect. Tell them a little well, snapshot uh, what, of that. Uh, you know, there are many, many uh, jobs in the Navy, about 60 of them, uh, from electronics technicians to uh, air conditioning repair, uh, machinist mate you might have heard of, but boiler tender, we operated the steam propulsion boilers. What runs the ship? What runs the ship, the generators, the main engines. And so uh, uh, being down there uh, in those uh, spaces, uh, the heat uh, was uh, 140 degrees. 140 degrees. Every single day. Every day. You can't believe it. Sustained at that. Uh, on top of the boilers was 180 degrees. Mm. Kid you not, we had thermometers. And we'd go to the lower level where it was 110 to cool off. <laughs> to cool I'm off at 110. You, that's, that's what it was like. And that's like. what you did for how many hours a day? Uh, 16 hours a day. It was a, uh, an eight-hour work day plus standing two four-hour watches, watches right? uh, rotating bases, uh, uh, virtually seven days a week. And uh, we did that at sea. Sometimes we had to see 54 days, 70 days on the gun line. That was straight. Uh, on the gun line, providing naval gunfire support uh, for ground operations. Uh, and where we were located and doing all that was um, uh, this was a destroyer. We provided naval gunfire support and plane guarding for the aircraft carriers. Uh, and we were located on a uh, uh, home port in Yokosuka, Japan. And uh, on Yankee Station, which was about 20,000 yards offshore, about the 12-mile limit 
of our five so inch right gun. you were off the coast of Vietnam. Exactly. We were at, um, where were we? We were at, uh, I'll get to that in a moment. So, um, uh, how did I. Uh, so you were in 140 say? degree places. It was what? Well, keeping was, ships running, protecting aircraft carriers. Uh, picking up any pilots who might have not made it back. Okay. And uh, anti submarine warfare. And again, providing gunfire support. And I have that detail. Uh, here we would work, uh, no one can understand the environment that people might work with uh, in, uh, in that heat. But uh, we eat salt tablets constantly, and um, it was just the life. And, uh, a lot of liquid, I mean, did you drink water all the time? Uh, or? Constantly, okay. yeah, constantly. And uh, a handful of salt tablets. And, well, how did I get to NAM? okay? So uh, back in the days of the late 60s, early 70s, with the, uh, uh, the draft lottery was still on, so I had a very low number. And um, I was just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Let's remind Go everybody, like, all sure. these young people watching the show, Go ahead. People, Sorry. there was a draft. A there draft. was a national draft where men yes. like you and I, men only at that time. Only men were drafted at right. the time. Okay. Uh, women could serve in the military, uh, but it was, uh, the draft only really applied to men who registered at 18. And... Uh, because now we have an all-volunteer uh, force, we don't have a draft. But back then, you know, you had hundreds of thousands of troops that went to Vietnam and drafted. Uh, some people enlisted, some people mm -hmm. went uh, on their own uh, uh, volition. But basically, it was draft and how to avoid the draft. Um, some could, some got, could not. There was a very elitist, uh, uh, white privileged kind of. Uh, of being in school, in college, uh, yes, of, of course, obviously, African Americans go to college, but it was basically, if you could afford to college, go to college, you could avoid the draft or become a school teacher. Um, so, not for me. I was driving yellow taxi cab. This is in New York City? In New City. York City. Uh, Which was a combat zone or not? It certainly was. <laughs> driving uh, a cab. <laughs> uh, uh, cab drivers were being killed back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. It was... It was uh, things that people did, uh, 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 the bad people uh, wanted to get paid, and so they would rob people, sure, just kill take people. The money, take the money. So it was a very dangerous kind of job, but I drove all over New York. But anyway, so driving a cab didn't have much of a future, so then I received my 1A draft ca that meant classification. You were, you were the top of the list Standing of by to go for right. induction. Right. So I, uh, what did I do? Well, I decided yeah, okay. oh. instead of being drafted, let me take a little control I enlisted in the United States Navy, figuring on uh, learning a trade, uh, which I did it was as a boiler tender. I chose that, um, idiot, uh, <laughs> uh, because it was a uh, learn how to boil water and make steam. I thought stationary engineer. Sure, I come back get out. a job. Yeah. Yeah. So I figured I could do that. So uh, I did that, and uh, once I, uh, uh, as a boiler tender, uh, so I went into boot camp, and uh, then uh, some training. Uh, schools. You went to Great Lakes. And it was Great yeah. Lakes, Illinois, was where I went here on the East Coast for boot camp, 13 weeks of boot camp. And then if you were uh, recommended and passed tests, you could go to school. Okay. So I went to advanced uh, individual training. Is that what the Navy called Army? That's what the Army called it. We called it uh, A school, B school, yeah, same C school, thing. like same that. Type of thing. So I went to A school for basic boiler work and then C school in Philadelphia for high pressure. Training. And then I went to the fleet. Uh, went as an E3, uh, which is uh, like a corporal. To uh, E3 is a, a like a private first class. Private first class. Uh, so yeah. got on the ship uh, to the forward fire room, and uh, as a boiler tender, I was assigned to fire room, and uh, with other watchstanders and technicians, uh, uh, a few times a week at night. So we'd be on the in, in the Gulf, again. Uh, this is the Gulf of Tonkin. Gulf of Tonkin. Yeah. It was 19. I was there from 72 to 74. And uh, so uh, sometimes we'd get out at night uh, to carry pallets of the 74-pound projectiles and 47-pound powder shells for the gun. Live, this is ammunition. This you is carry it like a baby. Ship's <laughs> going like this. And uh, you can't hold on to handrails. Mm. Harrowing stuff. I have so many harrowing stories. But uh, that was one of them. And then uh, so uh, we were at... Uh, we were just south of the demilitarized zone BMC. on Yankee Station, uh, the 12-mile limit of our gun. 
um, at, uh, it, uh, we were at uh, 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 Highway 1 uh, near the provincial capital of Quang Tri. The famous Highway 1 where yeah, the North Vietnamese famous, were moving uh, yeah, up and down yeah, weapons constantly. and troops. Yes. So that's where we were operating and the, uh, near the strategic bridge at Dong Ha. Uh, a book about that, the bridge okay. at Dong Ha. And uh, so we were firing and, uh, and all of that. And uh, we were hit on two occasions uh, with shrapnel from shore ordnance. Um, they were actually shooting which, at your ship. You know, we were shooting at them, they were shooting at us, and that's why I have my combat action ribbon uh, for that uh, action. And, uh, and there were times at zero dark 30, general quarters would sound, and so right back down the fire room, uh, grab a cup of coffee, stand in front of your station, mine was in front of the boilers, and uh, wait to see if it was uh, standard ammunition, was it a missile, uh, what was it? Uh, Something, to, something's being shot at you. It's, it's coming uh, because it was unidentified contact and just stand and wait to see if you lived or died. I, I'm, and then with the quiet relief of not being hit. Uh, so I'm not trying to be overly dramatic. I'm just no, saying the narrative it was, it was of what it was like. a precarious position. That's the way it was. Yes. Uh, but in my books, I uh, allude, uh, no, state outright. Nothing compares to what it was like being on the ground, Marines, Army. Oh, scared and, you know, of what, what, my friend Sonny, when he got back, he was an 101st Airborne. He got back. He was still chasing Viet Cong in his backyard mm -hmm. with his German Shepherd, PTSD, all this. So, you know, I do not suffer from that. My uh, experience in the war zone was fortunately, fortunately um, a neutral uh, um, with uh, that element of danger and, and uh, you know, impending horror. But anyway, getting through that. So, um, again, I'm just narr narr giving a narration You're of what fine. that was like. That's great. So uh, there were other enterprises as well while I was over there. I was over there for, you know, for two years. Uh, several of us... Uh, you were actually assigned duty for two years off of the coast of uh, Vietnam? Uh, yes. Oh, wow. Uh, on that ship. But that's where the I was. Army tour was only a year. We were 12 months. Oh, no. So you got twice yeah, the time. 24 months uh -huh. uh, on that ship. And then I was eligible for rotation. We'll get to that. Uh, so several, several of us engineering division uh, personnel bought motorcycles while we were over there in Japan to try and take advantage of not just hitting the bar across Texas Street outside the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, main gate of uh, uh, Yakuza Yard, but... Uh, also in other towns, but I could only ride the motorcycle. Yeah, were they there. Hondas? Were they, I'm assuming they I were bought a Honda. Yeah. The Yamaha, okay. Yeah, I had a 500 Honda, and a few of us bought others. Uh, they didn't have too many Harleys over there. Okay. My dad was a Harley rider, so I grew up like that. But, uh, but so I had a Honda, and we would be able to rent tents, and this is all part of my speech. Oh, wow. So yeah, yeah, uh, because these are the adventures we had besides you know, the, the war. Uh, so we could rent tents and sleeping bags, uh, from the Navy Exchange, we'd pick a couple of places. We go camping, visiting. Uh, I was just traveling marvelous. all around Japan. Yeah, the the, great. the the great Buddha in Kamakura, the uh, uh, the the goddess of mercy in Ofuna. It's all in my book. I give in my book. I have an appendix. We have all the ships I've served on, the ships I've worked on, uh, the places we've been to. Uh, and all kind of been to 22 countries around the world. What was, let me just ask you, because sure. as an Army guy, I mm -hmm. never figured out how the Navy worked. So you were assigned two years off the coast of Vietnam. Pretty much two years. Would yeah. you go back to Japan once a month, every six uh, months? Every six to eight weeks. Oh, six to eight weeks. We'd okay. go back to Yokosuka for repair, or we'd go to Taiwan, we'd go to the Philippines, we'd go to South Korea, uh, uh, Hong Kong. So uh, it was pretty extensive. Of the places so there's a that lot I was of travel going on besides now, the Not everyone of gets that, you know. Okay. You, you, uh, maybe you, you, you put in a, dr a dream sheet uh, where you try and pick the ship you want right. and where you want to be. Some, some guys say, well, I'll go to Greece, Greece, or let me be home ported in, in, um, in Massachusetts. <laughs> you know, I want to stay home. No, we all wish. No, I, I really want to get as far away Good. from New York Good and have you. an adventure and uh, not realizing how close I would be to Nam, but. Fortunately, again, I was unscathed, 
and the ship was unscathed. Well, thank you for Not your service, like, obviously. Uh, and all your medals, and I'm, at some point, uh, our cameraman will show those, but oh, just a magnificent, and I know you're going to talk well, about Well, again, them, I will, right? I will, but those are... Those are basically, I'm not an on. I'm not a uh, decorated vet. Decorated means silver star, uh, navy Bronze cross. Star Bronze star. Yeah. No, these are what they sometimes refer to as gidunk medals. That's a term we used. But it's national defense and uh, Vietnam service, Vietnam campaign. I can go through all that stuff, but uh, um, that is uh, just um, a, a, uh, an example. Of some it's of the, a beautiful collection. You yeah, be I proud put that it, together. No I put yeah. that together, and uh, the detail of that is to arrange it, and also the real big detail around the uh, inside. There's a white cotton braid. Now that white cotton braid, they call clothes stop. Now a clothes stop, the Navy uses this in boot camp. They don't have washing machines. You hand scrub hand your, scrub your, your sheets. Uh, with a stone, and then you have to put a dog ear on the sheet, put it on the line, no clothespin, you tie it with a clothes stop, right bow, right, right. everything, you know, the army, the Navy you know, way, the Navy, the Navy way. way, army way, they're all the same. And then, of course, in December, outside of Chicago, it freezes. So now you got to <laughs> stick a wood that you have to Your socks take apart. Wood. It's, okay. it's just silly stuff, you know? God bless the Navy. Um, so, uh, what did we, let's see, so we came back to Yakuska, do some ships repair, and if you didn't have the, the duty, you could take off and go sightseeing. Hop on your bike. And just oh, take wow. advantage of, um, that instead of, again, just doing nothing. I took all the photos, uh, so that was a great experience. Oh, I bet it was. To do that. Lifetime memories, and, right? And then I also had, uh, uh besides, uh, Yakuska, had many liberties, in other countries, like I say. So you were uh, well-traveled uh, as a young man. How old were you at that time? I was 21 when I went into okay, the service, man, and I was 25 when what I got out. What a great experience for a young 20, 21-year-old person. It was just unbelievable, person, right? oh, yeah. Yes. And not everyone takes advantage of it. And also taking advantage of um, um, advancing in rate, being recommended to be able to take the military uh, uh, manuals, tech manuals. Uh, you take written tests and practical tests, and then you rise in. Well, you in made E five. I'm impressed. I was only in E four. So yeah, you made E five. You did a great. It's very job. difficult to make E five yes, in four years. The Navy had a very strict thing. We had to take tests and yes. exams. See, the Army, hmm. if you knew the first sergeant, yeah, give him a grade. Yeah, yeah, I know. I noticed that. I mean, there are technical jobs in the Army. Obviously, now it's changed. It's changed but, uh, now to make it fair. But it's a different way of advancement. Yeah. A different method. Uh, we actually uh, are uh, technicians and mechanics and engineers. And it's about a, about a high school level of, uh, of learning. But good training, good training. Uh, it learned, uh, you know, uh, uh, thermodynamics and, uh, and mechanics. Uh, it was a great experience, and that's how you advance. So, and again, you have to make sure that you, uh, well, so I have my good conduct medal. And that's for the stuff I didn't get caught at, you know. <laughs> uh, All of this, everybody, every yeah, GI yeah. and every I'm sailor. I'm telling you, you know. <laughs> but uh, I was really a pretty squared away sailor. And uh, anyway, let's get through this. So uh, let's see. So uh, we worked, worked, worked. And we, my military service as a petty officer uh, really provided me with the opportunity to be able to um, have uh, increasing levels of responsibility, technical knowledge, uh, being able to help train other uh, technicians and be as a, uh, a guide to them. Well, chief and petty officers and sergeants in the Army ran... The service. They do. I'm sorry. They do. I have all, all respect the non for officers. Yep. The non-coms. Mm -hmm. I'm an army guy. Yeah. Look, my platoon sergeant told me to do something. To me, that was the law. Oh yeah. I mean, the lieutenants were great guys, mm. but they were, most of them were ROTC guys. Uh, they, some. They were history majors. So we, we had some uh, commissioned officers that were okay. Okay. And others not so good, but uh, in the army or the navy, it's the enlisted. Uh, uh, non-commissioned okay. officers or petty officers that run it and uh, you know they know their stuff um, so really I was able to take advantage of um, uh, greater levels of, of authority uh, in civilian work sure. because of my Navy training and 
Ooh, and, and opened up there. doors for the rest of your life, right? Besides really your memories did, of travel. Because uh, the rest of my life, I was able to work in mechanical technology, facilities management. Um, I worked as a, I got my refrigeration license from New York City Fire Department and uh, was an operating engineer. Also as an elevator service mechanic. Uh, I did all of that. Uh, and then I went back to school under the GI Bill. I got an associate degree in liberal arts, one okay. in, uh, in uh, this is environmental... This is back in New York? You're back in New York? Yes. Right? Back in New York. Yes, in Manhattan. Environmental control and building management. Uh, figuring I could turn all of this experience and now uh, education into something great, which I did. I secured my career position uh, as the, uh, um, uh, uh, as the uh, construction and maintenance coordinator for the Queens Public Library in New York. So we ran Which is a big system, right? Well, yes. We ran 68 buildings. 68. And uh, five adult learning centers. And I was responsible for, here was I am, uh, responsible for, for, let me see. Just about everything to keep no, the buildings going. Construction, spec writing, contracts, um, land use applications. Um, what else did I do? That sort of thing. Oh, the administrative... Um, uh, oversight of running an organization building. like that. 68, that's a lot of buildings. That's a lot of buildings, some from 1903 through present time. Well, let me ask you, let me just ask you, sure. what was New York like? I mean, I love New York. Mm. I just can't survive in New York. I'm not tough enough. Yeah, well, what was both. New York like at, at post-Vietnam? Uh, well, it was, uh, you know, the nuisance of alternate side parking. That's where you have to... <laughs> Explain that to someone Alternate side parking. Scouting. So trash collection uh, is uh, Mondays and Wednesdays and Tuesdays and Thursdays, you have to move your car to the other side of the street. So, so they one time clean. you're parking on the left side right. of the street, you've got to move it and to the right side. Of the back. It was real nuisance. So that was New York to me. So our life, when we moved to Chestertown 14 years ago, was pretty much the same thing: family, church, and scouts. Except we could always find a place to park. <laughs> so that was a difference living here. And maybe the and it's priorities been a marvelous, of parking. Marvelous, marvelous uh, place to live here. So I was with. Uh, let me see. Oh, so when I retired after uh, 27 years with the library, that's a long stretch these days. For yes, it is. To work at a Anyone place. who's worked that long one oh, place, yeah. good for so you. So I uh, came here. You know, retirement, it's not a function of age. It's a function of money. Sure. So when I got down here, I thought I'd be kicking back, watching TCM all day. Uh, I immediately started volunteering at my you got Daughter's twice school. as busy than you ever were, right? Yeah, I was a reading volunteer at Garnet Elementary where she went to school. And uh, then it morphed into, I could get paid for this. So I became a substitute teacher, a background check, fingerprinting. For seven years, I was a substitute teacher here, here in, Queen in Anne's Kent County? and Queen Anne's oh, Kent and Queen at Anne. 17 different schools, uh, teaching all academic and technical and creative subjects to my cherubs. And I would take the... Uh, special ed assignments. Substitutes don't take special ed assignments. Uh, because it's tough. Because it's very and difficult. It is difficult, yes. But I had three-year-olds with autism. I had third graders who couldn't wipe themselves. I had uh, uh, students in middle school blind, uh, in wheelchairs, nonverbal. Uh, this was the calling. This was the mission to me as a substitute. Tough and job so to I, be a substitute. I, you know, job. it really is. Uh, you work your guts out. You don't know the kids' names. You don't know what's going on. Yeah. I mean, if you're a teacher day to day, mm. I know what Johnny's going to do at 10 yeah, o'clock. But substitute, you're walking Sub in, you're cold. Different schools, and again, yeah. from all age groups, all schools, and I would call the attendants, start calling attendants, and then I'd throw in a, is Ishka Bibble here? <laughs> and they'd, they'd laugh, you know? And I was, I was really, uh, goodbye, Mr. Chips, uh, cheers for Miss Bishop. I was that teacher. <laughs> so... So based on my experience, what I discovered that I would also promote that the military could be a very neutral or positive experience, obviously, if it didn't maim you or kill you. So I always did that as career counseling as well. Okay. There's trade school, there's, but the, the, poor, the poor things, uh, some children read really well, many others are struggling, they don't have any home environment to help them. The schools fail them, uh, uh, racism. So it, on a, that's a whole other dissertation. Okay. But anyway, so uh, here on the Eastern Shore, I have participated in 
and still continue to participate in dozens of activities. And some of these examples, and I have to do this, because please, I'm really proud of impre this. I'm impressed every time you talk uh -huh. about it. Please. Uh, uh, as the former secretary of the board uh, of directors at Bayside Hoyas, helping our youth achieve success, it's a youth mentoring. Not the Georgetown Hoyas. Right? Not the Georgetown Hoyas, right? No, absolutely. No, no. Oh, yeah, helping yeah. our youth achieve success. Uh, we established in 2013, and it is a, it's a academic mentoring, character development, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been doing this for seven years. Uh, I, the former president of the board of directors at Crossroads Community Inc. It's a uh, a nonprofit, multi-county uh, organization providing services and advocacy uh, for individuals with mental illness, uh, addictions. Um, other disabilities and in recovery. So I've been doing that for seven years, uh, serving on that board, and also bringing my other technical expertise in to write construction specs and renovation specs. And you stayed working with the Yeah, I've traveled all over Good. the five counties to survey buildings, making recommendations for, uh, um, uh, for improvements, and I did that uh, for seven years. I'm still doing it. I'm on the exec finance committee. I served as chair of the vendor subcommittee for Legacy Day. Uh, Legacy Day uh, celebrating uh, and recognizing African American uh, history and culture in our little corner of the world. Uh, and uh, did that for nine years. We're still doing it. Mm. Uh, and would uh, run the vendors, food vendors, craft vendors, a lot of work, That's contracts. A lot of work. That's a lot of work. And I served as chair. Oh, as Character Counts Coach mm -hmm. uh, in the statewide program, provide weekly civics lessons. I was doing middle schools, sixth and seventh grades, and uh, I did that for, uh, uh, I was, uh, uh, different civics lessons that they have for you and you put your spin the on pillars, it. Uh, pillars. Pillars, yeah. Yes. The, ooh, I forgot. Citizenship. Yeah, for, et cetera, you know, I forgot to remind them for, and so what they are. I have to look them up every time but I anyway, go to yeah, class. So we did all that. Internet, yes. And then I was recognized uh, uh, by uh, the United Way uh, as Character Counts Coach of the Year in 2016. That was, quite uh, an honor. That was quite an honor. unbelievable. And then I served on the annual, I do serve, the annual scholarship banquet and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Prayer Breakfast Committee for Kent County Chapter and AACP. I've been doing that for uh, six or seven years. Uh, I am also a member of the Diversity Dialogue Group, uh, talking about, I would staff their table, informational table at Farmer's Market in Chestertown, and a tea party uh, with uh, uh, interracial uh, history and resources uh, for five years. I did that. Uh, I'm almost done. You're good. As a no, no, member no of the Education Subcommittee, of Social Action Committee for Racial Justice, doing this for about two years. Uh, we developed goals, strategies for uh, hiring, uh, recruiting, hiring, and retaining African American teachers and administrators in Kent and Queen Anne's, and also for uh, uh, in improving communication Good. between school admin and students and parents. Which is so important, caretakers. especially now. So especially doing right all that. now, going through COVID. Oh, I'm telling you, we did that for four years so far. When did you rest? When did you write books? No. When did you say, how do you want I, I did, did all that time? stuff. You know, busy people don't have the time. They make the time. Sure they do. Learned that a long time ago. So, a couple more. I'm the former, what am I? Oh, at church. Senior warden of the vestry, cemetery warden, property chair. Uh, I organized and participated in La Sagrada de Jesus Spanish Mission. I was an usher, Sunday school teacher, vacation Bible school instructor, uh, and uh, at historic Shrewsbury Church, Kennedyville. Ten years I did that. I'm still involved with Shrewsbury. Ah, as the volunteer grants administrator for replacing the roof and other improvements at Jane's United Methodist uh, Historic Register Church yeah, helping them out. in Kennedyville, in uh, Chestertown. Chester. Uh, eight years to, mm. to raise the money, to get it done. Uh, you know, like that, working with the architects, the contractors. I serve, uh, today I was on a Zoom meeting, Chester Valley Ministers Association, CVMA, and uh, what we do is we provide community-wide programs, initiatives, support, uh, like if it's Homeless Project, 
and uh, for a whole bunch of other things. Uh, doing it for, for eight years, uh, serving with CVMA. One more. This is a good one. Uh, I, I am certified by the Unitarian Universalist Church. I'm a closet Unitarian, okay. Unitarian <laughs> okay. even though I'm a baptized Episcopalian. Yeah, certainly, we won't tell. And we'll married tell. to clergy. There she is. <laughs> She's there looking she is. over your shoulder right no, now. I can't you know see her. But uh, for our whole lives program, OWL, uh, it is, uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm teaching and guiding, guiding with another facilitator on human sexuality for middle school students. This is important. Uh, addressing safety, choices, um, uh, self-respect, and, and the LGBTQ community, uh, this for three years. So that was training up in Philadelphia, and really to be able to go in and teach them mechanics and talk about self-respect and, um, you know, to, to uh, you know, treat themselves that they understand what it's all about. So helping as helping, much as possible. Helping young people. In that course, it's a very strict course and uh, well thought out, and they have to sign on, and their caretakers that they take it. Take it. Uh, so in recognition for all of my community service, then there's others in the fabric of our community. Uh, this was a big one. I was awarded the uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Humanitarian Award uh, by yeah. the CVMA at the Rock Hall Firehouse. Good that was That was one of the biggest milestones in my life to do that. So there's other volunteer uh, commitments, but we need to move on. Uh, but while I have been and continue to be busy uh, in all of this, it goes without saying that I am in complete thanks and in awe and wonderment of, uh, of how many services, missions, and other enterprises and caring that people provide to individuals in our community. In our community, it's amazing. In, 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 yes, in sincerely is. humble and and unselfish ways. And you're a big part so of that. So I gotta, thank you. I gotta say that that to me is to be part of that community of doing and that. Helpers, yes. And you know, take listen. I uh, I didn't serve four years in the Navy for nothing and work at the Brooklyn Navy Yard for three years for nothing. That's why I have mesothelioma, lung cancer, and uh, the prognosis was poor, but I've, uh, I'm sticking out so far about two years since I was diagnosed. I've gone through the chemo, gone through immunology. There's nothing else they can do for me. I'm in hospice, uh, but I'm being released, actually, because I'm still alive. You'll be home next week. I'll be home next week. I'm still alive. We'll do home health care, and we'll see how long I can be sustained uh, I'm fine. I'm feeling pretty good. You're doing great. Uh, and you're teaching me how to play cards. That's right. We play What's casino. That? Oh, What a great little game. We knock them dead. I taught that to my students because it's uh, math and counting and some other. And uh, and uh, and Mr. Fred was able to give me uh, a travel mahjong set, which oh, my that's sister really enjoyed. But I replaced that. But uh, and things like that. And so Tell me what mahjong is. Just, uh, mahjong, it's a, a tile card game played like poker or rummy. Uh, very popular in Asia. They play it all over the world. So that's what it is. Uh, it's, it's be fun. Like it that. comes in the neatest little kit. I should have Yeah, well, they have full size. My yeah. sister has my mother's set. Oh, okay. Uh, but anyway, so we've been doing that. And what, what uh, Mr. Fred and I have been doing is since he came in uh, to my life here at this place, uh, he's been a good friend. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, really uh, spiritual. Uh, he's given me books. We've swapped books. Um, Don't tell them about the donuts, whatever you do. <laughs> well, the donuts. I'm not Don't supposed to donuts because of my diabetes. But anyway, we eat them anyway. I don't care. Yeah. You know, if, it, if it's not labeled for individual sale, it has no calories whatsoever. Why not? So, you Why know, not? So I do that. But uh, Fred and I have been uh, swapping sea stories and talking about stuff. And we're about the same age. And this guy is uh, really... Uh, Amazing. Uh, well, a couple. Don't talk know. about me. Uh, oh, sorry, about, sorry. All right, let's do this. Just a couple more minutes, so we don't. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. So tell it. Tell it. Look at. I'm holding one of your books. Pay oh, the price. Yeah, oh, books. How about spend just a minute or two? Right. Tell us about briefly the four books you've written. Yeah, and, and they're over the, there. We okay, can, but just you uh, do this, my memory. This is pay the price and other stories. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this I wrote in 2014. This is a book that talks about Thanks. its collection of short stories, essays. They're all talking about the anticipations and pathos in the times before, during, and after 
the war. Okay. St uh, stories of human interaction and Number relationships. Two. This connections and other stories. Again, continues uh, the heart and the heartache of human relationships, the regrets and triumphs of, uh, of those uh, and losses that result from um, sharing in human activities. A great color. I love this book. Great stories in this book. Very mellow cover. I like this. This is called Don't Think Change and Other Writings. Its purpose of this one is colored Battleship Gray, and my sister said, Larry, I think you put too much effort into it. <laughs> no, no, it's Battleship Gray. This because it is what it is. And this is, uh, this is personal essays uh, and, uh, and stories, personal stuff, family stuff, reflecting on remembrances, um, transitions against the backdrop of history. So this is a great little book. The introduction to this book gives a very uh, good um, 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 teaching uh, and guidance on writing, nonfiction and fiction and plot. And, uh, so the introduction is really great on this one. And, and the stories themselves, the stories themselves okay, about yeah, okay. like my favorite, my favorite uh, TV happy time, Brownsville Christmas, oh, wow. How I Lost Santa Claus, uh, The House Where God Lived, um, my favorite kitchen implements, which is my wife because she takes out the trash. <laughs> he uh, takes care of it. And uh, this is Travelogue Observations. Uh, this is stories, again, and essays uh, describing remembrances, home life, travel, and providing that personal, personal examination and uh, selected military service history and relationship. So this one is great, I gotta say. Escaping you danger at the Beipu, Beipu duck races. Oh, wow. Things like that. So, Larry, if someone's things. watching the program no, and the two programs I guess we're doing, and they say, this Navy stuff is interesting, mm -hmm. Brooklyn, interesting, yeah. boiler guy, interesting, yeah. traveling around in motorcycles in Japan, how can they get the books? These books are available on Amazon.com. Oh, just com. Amazon. Uh, they're also at the public library. Uh, Tom Martin over at Bookplate mm -hmm. has a couple copies up at Cecil College Library. They're at the uh, um, one of the middle school libra libraries, uh, but Amazon. Just go on Amazon. And their price, type type Amazon, in your name. Copy right? my name, Larry I. Samuels, and you'll find me. Uh, because if you don't get the title right, you won't find it. But key in my name, and uh, they're all priced to sell, you know, thirteen, fourteen bucks. Uh, Hint, hint, hint. Bargain so, at twice the price. I'm telling you, yeah. You know, <laughs> okay. So, uh, anyway, so they're available, and uh, there's a lot of things in there. You might not like everything. I'm sure that you will find some delight and pathos and uh, um, uh, sympathy and joy in, in these books and really some great information. So have at it. a very interesting life you know. and great... Hi, Fred Manuel wanting to thank you very much for watching this very interesting story about Larry Samuels, an author. And by the way, all of Larry's books are available on Amazon. Just type on Amazon, type in Larry Samuels, and you get whatever book you would like to watch. Thanks for watching the show. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time.